I, I hope I share with everyone a feeling of being inspired by the science that was discussed over these last several days and the hope that by coming together as a group, we've really brought together people from different fields who don't normally mix. You know, I don't know, I don't know that I've ever been in a meeting with a sleep specialist before. Um, and I think it's great that we're mixing these groups, getting new ideas, and really, I'm very hopeful that we'll generate some new clinical trials, some new therapies that will really, in the end, benefit the people that we're here to work for. And, you know, in particular, from the immunology side, I feel like there were several themes that emerged. One theme is the heterogeneity of the cohorts and the need to really cluster our groups and try and figure out if there are subsets with certain immune phenotypes. But other themes emerge, the importance of monocytes, the importance of metabolism. But the metabolism is, of course, intertwined with our exercise tolerance and, our, and everything else. And I think that by putting this together, what I hope we come out of this with is long-lasting collaborations to really make impact, not just in long COVID, but in all the related diseases. And I think that's all I'm going to say. I'll turn it over to you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I just want to thank everyone for your participation. And I will leave this meeting being thankful and excited on how scientists, basic scientists, as well as clinicians, have come together and pulled together a extraordinary effort to try to understand this most complex and heterogeneous disease. And I think um, we will all agree that if we look at all of the various uh, things that we study, from the vascular diseases, from Avi Nath's findings on fibrinogen, the Vist Lab's findings on muscle, Jane Mitchell's talk on endothelial dysfunction, Catherine, who uh, focused and spotlighted the issues of adipose involvement, Clifford Rosen and the impact on HDL and lipid peroxidases, all of the animal studies, Kirsten Sauter and Sarah List group. Uh, I think the, 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 the most wide um, type of studies that we have been introduced to in this keystone is absolutely wonderful. And then William Robinson's and the EBV mimicry are obviously of very great importance. Then um, Rebecca Skalski and Adriana Marquez on Lyme disease. And then the disease management. I think we, we, have, we have far to go to manage the disease. Uh, I was inspired to hear that there were so many speakers that talked about the, the pediatric long COVID um, initiatives and how it's critical to look at pediatric long COVID too. And, and, and that includes John Hood and Sindo um, Mohandas that spotlighted that. And then the complement signaling, it just shows us how extremely complex this disease is. I would like to end off, and I think I'm going to steal some of the words of, of Harlan, where he said, we need to hold hands, we need to work together. And I think this keystone allowed us to do that. And it was inspiring to see not only scientists and clinicians, but also journal editors that, that was here. And also the fact that this was broadcasted in the media. So I wish to thank you, and I wish to leave you with the responsibility that we not only should stay here and keystone and think what we have done here, but we need to reach out to each other and we need to work together. So please exchange the emails, talk to each other, and let's do this for the patients. And I can't leave the stage without thanking our wonderful patient-led research collaborations. Lisa, thank you so much for spotlighting how we as researchers must hold hands with the patients as well. Thank you, everyone. And have a safe journey back. <laughs> <laughs>